Hey guys, in today's video, we're gonna be talking about how to sheet a wall. We're just gonna go over the order of operations and some important things to pay attention to when you're sheeting. So let's get into it. So the very first thing you do before you sheet a wall is always check plumb. You have no idea if the wind has blown your wall or if someone's moved it or if it's been adjusted. You always wanna check plumb because once you sheet it, it's not gonna move. It's gonna stay exactly where it's at, leaning or plumb. On this particular wall, we've already sheeted the upstairs and we're tied into the concrete, so we wouldn't be able to move it, but we are plumb here. So yeah, always check plumb before you start. The second thing you need to do is check your rough openings. We like to come back and just make sure that this is what the rough opening is supposed to be. Now, it seems kind of stupid because you already framed it, but this will save you in the long run. If you catch one window that's wrong, it will save you because it takes five seconds to check the rough opening. It takes two hours to fix it after it's sheeted. So this is supposed to be 42 tall by 54 wide. We got 42 and an eight by 54. So there's two different ways to sheet. First is horizontal. You're running your sheets the long way across the wall. Second is vertical. You're running them straight up and down. Now, there's a lot of different stuff going on with between these two ways. On this wall, we're gonna be sheeting vertically because that's how we set our shear blocks up and our chalk line up here where we already have sheeting. So I'll walk you guys through how to sheet horizontally, just so you know. No matter how you're sheeting, the first thing you're gonna do before you start is chalk a line. You always wanna sheet your first row off of a chalk line. And if we were sheeting this horizontally, we would pull up off the sill plate. So we hook our tape underneath the sill. Now we can put a mark at 48 if we're going flush to the bottom of the sill, or we can go 47 and a half if we're gonna overhang a half inch. On this house, we're going flush to the bottom of the sill, but ask your general or your lead framer what you guys are doing on your house. So we're gonna make a mark at 48, if we were sheeting horizontally, we'd walk down to the other end, make another mark, pull a line really tight. Maybe 35 foot run is your biggest, biggest span, or otherwise you'll pull up again or run a string line. Because you want this line to be perfectly straight so that your sheets stack on top of it really well. But in this scenario, we already sheeted the wall upstairs off of a chalked line. So we're gonna hold our sheets tight to that and that's where we're gonna nail and we know that we're gonna be flush with the bottom of our sill plate on this one. So now that you have your chalk line or you're ready to go and start sheeting, you're gonna check where your layout is because we pull layouts from corners, 16 on center. So we wanna make sure that we're starting from the right side. If we pull layout from one corner, it usually doesn't work out on the other with the measurements of the house. So you just check it real quick Make sure it's on center, and that's the corner you start from. Now we're gonna scatter our sheets down the wall. Oof. When we pulled layout on our studs, we matched the upstairs to the basement so that when we nail, our sheet hits the stud all the way but the floor trusses only hit every eight feet. So on this first section right here, we have a four foot sheet ending between the trusses. So I already went ahead and made these blocks to go in out of scrap lumber that we had. We're gonna use long nails, uh, three inch nails, to put this block right where we need to nail our sheeting. You can use two by fours, whatever kind of backing you have, uh, scrap wood, to make sure that this edge is nailed. Because on this house, it's very important that all of the edges are nailed. The code here requires that all panel edges are nailed with shear blocks. And we need to have six inches on center around the edge. So it's important that we put this backer here. Even if we didn't have shear blocks, we would still put this backer here because the gap is over 14 and a half inches. 
The reason I spaced my sheeting out like this is because I know that every eight feet, we're gonna need one of these blocks to nail to. So when you're nailing on sheeting, you always wanna use two and three eighths inch nails unless otherwise called for. So we're gonna go ahead and hold up our sheet here. And while we're holding it up tight to that other sheeting line, which is acting as our chalk line in this scenario, we wanna make sure and flush this edge here on the corner of the house. When you're nailing off sheets, there's a couple things to keep in mind. Around the edge, very commonly, we do a six inch on center nailing pattern. So anywhere there's an edge of the sheet, you can put a nail every six inches. This goes around the whole sheet, the corners of the house, and around window and door openings. In the center, we commonly do 12 inches on center. On engineered shear walls, you can occasionally get way denser nailing patterns. They can get as much as four inches on center on the edge, maybe even three on some, and six or eight inches on center in the field, which means any studs in the middle of the sheet. So a really important part of sheeting is that when you start nailing, you wanna make sure your nails aren't going in too deep. You want them about a 16th below the surface if possible. So you either have to adjust the pressure on your air compressor or just change the depth of your actual nail gun. So as we nail this off, we have studs running up all the way through, but not through our floor section here. So these trusses are 19-2 on center, which means you may have to pull your tape and mark it out, or you can make a mark on the concrete down below, just so you know where your floor trusses are in order to hit them with the nails. We're also gonna do a row across this double top plate here and across this rim board up here. Ideally, you wanna tie in another row here on this bottom plate so that it ties in your bottom plate to the rim board, to the top plate, to the bottom plate. Last thing when nailing off your sheets is when you're nailing into treated, you wanna use galvanized nails. This is a code requirement in our area, so we make sure we go around and do galvanized nails on the whole perimeter. Okay, so this sheet goes over a window here, and before I put a sheet on the window, I always like to check for any nails around the perimeter, because we use a router to cut out our windows, and if you clip a nail, your router bit is done. So, when I put this sheet up here, I'm just gonna tack it in. I'm gonna tack it here and here so that I can cut this out first so I can see my edge where to nail to. That way I'm not guessing, miss with a nail and break my router bit. Now I'll mark out my floor trusses here. I can pull right off the end because we're centered. You can see that they're not on the lines that are on the sheet for nailing your studs on. So that, that way I know I can go here and here and at the end to hit the floor trusses. So now we'll nail this sheet off. So here we are at the end of our run, and we got a sheet that's gonna be cut up around this sill plate. So we'll just measure over here. Um, we're gonna go a little bit past, 23 and three quarter. And we got 42 and, 42 and three eighths. So we'll go chalk and cut this sheet. So we're all nailed off on our blocks here. Now we're gonna put galves in, galvanized nails, and shoot our treated board down the bottom. Real smooth. Okay, we got that wall all sheeted. 
Now we're just gonna share a few more details to pay attention to when shooting. Now, right here, we have an arrow pointing the long way of the sheet. And that's the strength axis of the sheeting. When they, when they build these pieces of sheeting, they don't just throw all these particles in randomly. They're actually laid out in an engineered way that the sheet is stronger this way. Now, there's a lot of debate about this on the internet, but this strength axis is supposed to go perpendicular to your framing members. So if you have boards running, it's supposed to run across them. If you shear block all your edges like we have here, then you don't need to run it across your framing members because the shear block strengthens that edge from buckling. So when the wind's pushing against the wall, those sheets without blocks between the studs can bend in between the studs. That bend between the studs is what this strength axis is referring to. So when you're sheeting a roof, you want to make sure and follow that strength axis and run it perpendicular to the trusses. Because when you're stepping on it, it will have less bend. That bend is what makes a wall weak. An engineer friend of mine said that when you put shear blocks in a wall, it makes it 70% stronger because it takes out that flex. So behind me, you can see that we line the seams up of these lower sheets with the upper sheets. The reason we can do that is because all of these edges have blocks behind them and they're nailed six inches on center. So if you're running your sheets horizontal, a good practice is to stagger your sheets. If you don't have them blocked, you need to stagger your sheets in order to achieve strength. On, even if you're running vertical, it's a good practice to stagger. The reason we didn't here is because we don't have to with the shear blocks and because our layout works out real well to just start up with a full sheet. You can see up above me here, we wrap the sheeting around the corner of the window. And that doesn't always work out, but we really try and make that happen because it ties the header into the jack and king and it ties your sill into your jack and king as well. It makes it really strong, ties it all together, avoids drywall cracks in the future. Another thing to keep in mind when sheeting is that we're just trying to tie everything together. We don't want to split a sheet where we have two framing members coming together. We want to run that sheet over so that it ties it all in with the nails. So up behind me here, you can see that at the top plate there, it sticks up about an inch and three quarter. And that's because our gable truss is sitting right there. So when we sheet our gable, we're gonna hold our sheeting up an inch and three quarter. And then when we set it on, we can nail it in with the wall sheeting so that the sheeting actually holds the gable truss on. Same thing with the heels behind me. We ran our sheeting up the heel of the trusses so that we can nail into the heels and it will help hold it down. It just, the sheeting is what gives the house strength. So you really want it to tie everything together and overlap the breaks in the framing. So behind me here, we haven't sheeted this wall yet or put any shear blocks in. We'll actually need fire blocks on this wall because it's so tall. So we'll turn two by sixes on the flat to use as our shear blocks. But up here, you can see it doesn't really work out to put a full sheet here because you're gonna have to do two rows of blocking or something weird. So we can actually cut this first sheet down to split on this rim board here so that that acts as our blocking. And then we only have to do one row of blocking up top, eight feet above that. And so, so when you're sheeting, it just takes a little bit of strategy to figure out how to tie in the gable trusses and the floor trusses and the walls all together. So when you're trying to tie in your floor to the walls, you can actually overlap three quarters in three quarters of an inch on the bottom plate so that it splits your bottom plate and you can tie that in. You just need to angle your nails to make sure they're hitting that board really well. Okay, so there you have it. We sheeted this wall. Hopefully you guys got a lot of value out of this. Just in recap, before you sheet a wall, always check plumb every time because once you sheet it, it's not moving. Uh, also, check your rough openings before you sheet them. It's way easier to fix it before you sheet than after. Again, six inches 
on center, nail around the edge, 12 inches on center in the field. Feel free to put more nails in to tie things together, like the wall to the floor system. Don't forget to put galvanized nails into that bottom treated plate and you should be good. Be sure to check out our video about tie vecking up here. And if you guys got any value out of this video, be sure to subscribe because we're doing a video about every skill it takes to frame a house.